going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Okay, does this help? <laughs> Where the wind is absolutely insane today. Hopefully, the wind noise isn't too bad. I got the new mics from Rode, the Rode Wireless Go 2s. Hopefully, fingers crossed, the audio comes out good on this today. We're going to jump right into this. We're at 2829 Southeast 15th Street here in Oklahoma City. And we're going to jump right in this. How about some bikes, man? Let's jump in with some bikes. Let's see if they got anything new since the last time we were here. You guys have to comment below if you've seen this one already. I don't recall seeing this one the last time we were here, but I go through so many cars and bikes every single week. I just cannot remember everything that we've seen. It looks like, though, when this person had their accident, they were going... 35 miles an hour, just under 35 miles an hour. Honestly, like, that's not too bad in a car, but when you think about on a motorcycle, crashing at 35 miles an hour, that's a, uh, yeah, there's just not a lot here to protect you. You know what I mean? And you can see the front end just got smashed, man. Smashed. I hope the, the guy or gal is all right. But I mean, honestly, the bike doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape. So hopefully everybody walked away from this one a-okay. Look at this beautiful 13 Harley right here. I, I actually like the color. It's like a dark brown metallic with a non-metallic kind of piano black paint. Beautiful paint scheme, I think, anyway. I, I love this. I love this. Metallic brown, dark black. You got a red stripe and kind of a gold stripe right there as well. Very nice. Look at the chrome, man. The chrome. Oh absolutely beautiful as well let's see what else we got here a uh, honda cbr you know little fun crotch rocket bike not really my thing i mean none of these are and let me tell you something though this one right here i i just named this silver bullet name that silver bullet it's got that bright chrome paint it's i mean i think anyway you guys comment below it's probably one a lot of you're gonna just totally dislike but i think it's beautiful man uh I love this chrome colored paint. It is absolutely stunning. Look at these wheels too, man. I just think the bike overall is sharp. It is sharp, man. This is a Screaming Eagle exhaust. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful in my opinion. And I understand opinions will vary, but th this is one I could get down with right here. This is one I could absolutely get down with right here, guys. Unfortunately, I don't know how to ride them. I don't really have the time to go figure it out. Although, believe me, I could. I guarantee you, uh, I learned how to drive a stick shift in a few hours on public roads. I figured it out because my life depended on it. <laughs> I'd probably take this thing right out in the street and go, let's do this. We'll, we'll figure this out. Might lay it down a couple times. That's all right. It looks like it's already been laid down once anyway. So ain't going to hurt the bike too much. And it ain't going to hurt my feelings too much. So you have to clean this, you know, doo-doo off of there. It looks like something kind of all down the side. But I like that bike. I really, really like that bike. That one's all right. This is not my style. This one, what the heck is this? A 19 Husqvarna. Okay, I do remember. I, I remember this because I got a Husqvarna lawnmower. And I had no idea they made bikes. No idea. I was like, Husqvarna? Lot, but what? My, like my riding mower? No way. Uh, this one this one definitely went off the road and into some dirt, man. That probably hurt. I guarantee you that hurt. That 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 uh, straw type stuff, man, that'll cut you up. That'll cut you up. We got a bag full of stuff over here that goes with this. But it says on the side here, starts and runs. So you know, apparently, apparently the bike is still a runner. What else we got over here? Let's take a look. We got a Honda. This, like, you know, when I tell everybody I'm really more of a cruiser type, I'm looking for a cruiser. If I were to get into bikes, I'd be looking for a cruiser. I'm, I'm totally mistaken because this is like the ultimate cruiser. I'm not looking for this. This is too much. I am not getting on a bike and driving cross country. This is just too much everything for what I would be looking for, but you know, I could do something like that or the silver bullet over there. Yeah, I like this one too. It's just the, the, the speakers in the front just make it too wide. I don't I don't like how wide this flaring is in or fairing is in the front flaring. Uh, anyway, 
Let's move into the, uh, I call this a motorcycle shack. I don't know what Copart's official term is for this building, but for me, this is the motorcycle shack, man. I love coming in here and seeing what they got. This has been here for a while, this R6. <sighs> Even though this is not the style of bike that I am into, mad respect because I think this thing is just, I think it's beautiful. I think this is beautiful. This white with contrasting black, absolutely gorgeous. I love the designs down the side right here. To me, this reminds me of like Fast and Furious. You know what I mean? It's got a Fast and Furious look to it. I love it. I, I would ride that one. I would ride that one. What do we got over here? Yeah, so many Harleys, man. 99% <laughs> of what's in here, I think, are Harley Davidsons. This is a very, I like this one. I still like that silver bullet better, but I really like this. It's very basic, minimalistic. You got you a little seat, got a gas tank, and somewhere right there is probably a speedometer and you probably got a little fuel gauge or something right here. It, it turns, it's like very basic, minimalistic looking, slick, beautiful, sharp. Look at it, beautiful bike right there. That is another one. I would absolutely ride this. This one right here, I don't even know what this is. Let's take a look because I, I have no idea. An 07 Honda VTX 1300R. That's a, that's a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> VTX 1300R. Um, I'm assuming 1300 means ginormous engine. Okay, really ginormous engine. Yeah, this is a... Mm, that's a that's a big bike. God, Lee, look at this. I mean, look at the motor on this thing. No way, dude. That's a big bike. That one is a no. Uh, another kind of you know cruiser, bigger bike. I like this. You can see you little raccoon prints all over it, man. <laughs> little things even like motorcycles. Like they they love they love they're like me. They love just about everything. This this is nice. You got a 88 cubic inch twin cam. So this isn't a monstrous engine. It's not that big of a bike. It's something I think I wouldn't want to start on a bike that big, but eventually I could get into that. This one, again, just too big, too wide for me, but but I love it. Like, I, I look at these wheels. Look at these wheels right here. Oh, man. Love the wheels. Don't worry, we're not going to focus all of our time today on motorcycles. I won't go through and show you each and every one. Hey, here's one I could ride right here. This, I could probably actually ride that one. Another, oh, she is gorgeous, man. One day, guys, I'm gonna learn how to ride a bike and I'm gonna do videos about it. So, you, so if I fall over and I'll buy my bike from one of these auctions, that much I can guarantee you. If I decide to learn how to ride, I'll buy a bike that's already been crashed from one of these auctions and I'll learn how to ride it on camera. So when I crash and, and scrape myself up and bust my head, you guys will be right there to watch it. You can laugh and hopefully you can learn with me. That's the main thing is go ahead and get a good laugh at my expense. I'm pretty, I'm pretty much used to that, <laughs> but, but learn something, learn something from me. Okay. If you could learn something from me, even if it's just because I'm an idiot and you learn not to do that because that's stupid, you still learn something that makes me feel better about being an idiot sometimes. Okay. More beautiful bikes. Oh, I like this. No, I don't. I don't. I don't like it. I got to convince myself I don't like these bikes, but I actually, actually really like that. I don't care for all the AutoZone, you know, skull flames and everything they threw all over it, but oh, wow. Wow. You don't have to know anything about bikes to know an Indian. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to know anything about bikes to know an Indian. Look how this, I think, let me, let me, let me get my thoughts composed here. Bikes are like art to me. All right. They're like usable artwork and every manufacturer has their own way of painting their picture. And Harley Davidson and Indian just, it, it blows my, every time I look at the way they've designed, look how flush this all looks. You know, the motor is there, but it's so flush with the rest of the bike. It, it's beautiful. It's beautiful the way they design these, man. It really is. That's going to be a Honda, right? Honda Shadow. Okay. Another, I like this. This, I like this too. I really, 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 really dig this. I really dig this one. Okay, the handlebars are a little, what are they, are these called, uh, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with motorcycle terminology, but are these called uh, eight bars or 
or ape handles or something like that. I think that's what these were called. I love it. I love it. Just the handlebars though. Like the handlebars to me look like they're way too far back. I'm actually going to, I'm going to sit on this one. Hope I don't break it. Oh yeah. Oh, let's set this bad boy up. She's a heavy girl. Yeah. See these, uh, these handlebars right here. They're just, they're kind of, I don't, I don't know guys. You tell me, how do I look? How, how do I, how do I look on a hog on a hog? Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh man. All right. Cool bike though. Cool bike. <gasps> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to see me drop one, don't you? No, nah, not going to happen, man. I better get off this thing before I actually do drop it, though. Yeah, I really do like this bike. And then one of these days, I swear, I'm going to get this <laughs> get this Vespa. <laughs> I could definitely ride this one. I have no doubt I could ride this little Vespa. All right, guys, I think that is it for the for the bikes. The, the bikes. The, <laughs> for the bikes. Let's go out here, take another quick look, make sure I didn't miss anything. And then we can continue on our way. Sometimes they have bikes hidden over here. Nope, no bikes hidden over here. Okay, let's move on. Well, I was walking by and I couldn't help myself. I had to stop and check out this 2017 Mustang GT. It looks totally fixable. The damage doesn't look that bad, but something tells me it's probably got frame damage. Uh, what an interesting hit. It folded up the hood, folded in the fender, and obviously the majority of the impact was over in this area. What I find really confusing is whoever had it, looks like they were trying to glue the bumper or something and sheet metal screws, they were trying to glue it and screw it. <laughs> glue, glue it and screw it, man. You got the AM for American Muscle. I know that from back in my days of these Mustangs. Oh, the hood, they've got the hood actually closed up so uh it's taped down there's your frame rail there's a little damage behind the crash bar obviously the crash bar is destroyed uh condenser needs to be replaced i can see it's bowed it's got a good gouge in it um core support and everything under here is all pretty well trashed as well yeah i wonder if this is a runner no it's a non-runner I, I just I got a hunch on this one that there is some frame damage that the front end has been shifted You know take a look at this You see how we've got overlapping now that could be from pushing it this way, but I really feel I really feel like the front end has been tweaked Just a tad bit Towards the driver's side, but like I said, I could be wrong. I can't really see anything. Oh, man. Okay. I didn't realize it's all taped up here, so we can't get in. Hey, it looks like a Instagram, elusive underscore one. Hey, congratulations, man. Your car made its way to my YouTube channel. Here it is at the local Oklahoma City Yard 18. I can't even get into it at all. <laughs> Dang. Dang. Yeah, they got both the windows taped up, so I can't uh, I can't get in it. Does it have keys? It's. I see the keys in there. It's a stick shift. I can see the shifter. And I can see the keys. Unfortunately though, guys, uh, because they got the tape on the windows, I cannot get in there. So it looks like it was a sick looking car. I like these wheels too. These wheels actually look very similar to the, uh, to the performance pack wheels that I had on my 2015 GT performance. I like these wheels, man. Sick car. Hope you turned out all right, man. I hope you got something just as fun as the Mustang GT used to have, man. Or I shouldn't say man, I should not assume this was a guy. That is, that. that's really, that's not cool of me. Let me apologize publicly. I'm not even gonna re-record it. I just assumed this was a guy's car. 100% could absolutely be a female's car as well. So regardless, elusive one, I hope you and anybody that was with you came out okay in this car. Beautiful car, by the way, beautiful car. How about a 2005 Volvo S40? Primewell, Primewell, very good tires. Like tires look practically new. A few minor dings and dents here and there, but honestly, car looks good. Car looks good. I kind of wonder why it's here. It looks a little, a little too good. 144,000 miles. Oh, wow. Look at that interior. This never happens. This never happens. It's got good tires. No body damage to speak of. It is super, super clean, although the seat here has been replaced. You can see it had these seats with the, these like uh, stitches running through them. And this one is different. That's okay though, man. That's okay. 
Looks like someone's just trying to make it look a little better. Nothing wrong with that. Wonder if it fires up. It's got the sunroof. It's a clean car, man. Like, I'm surprised. Clean cars like this kind of scare me. <laughs> it's like, hey, man, a little bit too clean. We got an oil change sticker, so it's still within uh, the interval. It's not even due for an oil change yet. What is going on here, man? Let's pop the hood. It's got a dead battery. Let's uh, throw a booster pack on this bad boy. I like this. I like this a lot. This is a clean car. This I've seen only a few of these out here in the past. And I've always wanted to buy one, and I've just never been able to get my hands on one. So before we go cranking it, since we got to get under here, let's go ahead and take a look. Oil is very clean, golden, beautiful, beautiful oil. Coolant, what do you think, guys? I bet the coolant's going to be nice, too. Or maybe, yeah, well, wait a minute. There's floaters in there. There's floaters in the coolant. Lots of floaters in the coolant. I don't know what that is. Okay, all right. Um, trans dipstick, anybody? Anybody know these cars? Can you comment trans dipstick somewhere? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, let's put a jump on it. Let's see what she sounds like. All right, here we go. Uh, what? All right. I feel a misfire. It's kind of coming and going. It's not a steady misfire, but it's a Definitely an intermittent misfire. Pretty heavy. Let's see how she does as she idles down. Yeah, I can feel the misfire for sure. Definitely. Okay. Let's, put, let's give it just a tad bit of RPMs. Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely got a, got a misfire going on. Put it in gear. Yep, she goes backwards. She goes forwards. No issues at all there. All right, what about the air conditioning? Let's find out if the AC works. Boy, look at the look at the buttons on. Like this is like a big remote control, you know what I mean? <laughs> all right, let's turn this on that. Let's turn the AC on. It's actually, even though it does look like an old TV remote control, it's very intuitive. I think because it looks like a remote control, it's actually fairly easy to navigate it. So I, I give them props for that. Let's check the, uh, the important window. Important window works. Less important window. Uh-oh. Oh, oh whoo! <laughs> works. Okay. Let's, uh... I thought I had the air conditioning on. I guess I didn't. Made some funky noises there for a minute. Come on, old girl. Oh, the blower doesn't work. Interesting. I hear the compressor. Yeah, the blower does not work. Uh-uh. Radio? Premium sound. Okay, radio appears to work. We've got a little exclamation mark on the dash, probably because the engine uh, is exposed to the elements. We'll turn the AC off. I think it works, it's just the blower motor's bad. It's not running poorly though. I definitely feel a misfire. But it's not a, it's not something that I feel like extremely alarmed about. Uh, the one thing I don't know is, is this a four cylinder or is this a five cylinder? I know Volvos do these weird, you know, four or five cylinder designs, a five cylinder. Yeah, you can see it misfiring right here. I mean, if you just watch it, you can see her bouncing around. Yeah, she's definitely down one cylinder. You know, thankfully, it's not that difficult to figure out which cylinder it is. What's it like to do a tune-up on this, I wonder? It looks like you got to pull this uh, this upper plenum off, which I don't think is that big of a deal. You know, your, your little... God, those are tiny. What are those, eights? One, two, three, four, five, six of them. Uh, disconnect this flex hose right here. Take off the map sensor right there. And this... Uh, 
probably a PCV type thing right here. Pull that off and I think you get this upper intake, this upper plenum I should say off. You have access to your plugs and you have access to your fuel rail. So uh, yeah, this, uh, I had a Volvo once that did the same thing. Same thing, it ran rough and I tried everything, man. And I could not ever get that thing to run right. Never could. But it was much older. This is like a, I don't remember, guys. If you're an OG subscriber to the channel, you remember that car. It had a Plasti Dip all over it. My brother and I spent a whole day getting the Plasti Dip off. We cleaned it up. We just could never get that misfire at idle to go away. But as soon as you start hitting the gas, she's go down the road again. I like this car, guys. Comment below. Tell me what you think of the S40. One of my favorite old school GM cars is the Chevy Trailblazer. These things are work horses, man. I've, every time I come across one, which isn't often anymore, I tell everybody about my experience. Well, I had one just like it. I drove it from Terre Haute, Indiana to Wichita, Kansas with a U-Haul trailer behind it. All right, it's just a straight six motor. And this thing hauled, now it only got like 10 or 11 miles a gallon. But really, when you think about that, it was carrying a trailer full of all of my stuff. The inside was full of all of my stuff, and it made the trip with no issue. And keeping it real, she had some miles on her. I think she had over 200,000 miles on her. And generally, what ends up happening to these, in my personal experience, does this have third row? It does. Oh, it's got the third row. It's leather. This is a good one. This is a good one. And by the way, guys, I don't want to shoot myself in the foot here, but these things sell like hotcakes. Uh, I can sell one of these the minute I get it. I could buy something like this, not even clean it, and someone will come buy it, and they'll give me my asking price for it. Uh, it's the Trailblazers just sell. Now, in my experience, the main thing that happens to these is there's actually two things that I've experienced to go wrong with these. Pretty common. That is the cooling fan. Okay, it's some kind of an electric hybrid with fluid cooling fan type situation. Those can go bad. Not a huge deal. Can be a little bit of a PITA to replace, but not a huge deal. But more common for me has been the transmissions just refusing to go into gear. Not slipping, not slipping, but just refusing. It may have first gear, may have second gear, but it just doesn't have third. Third gear is gone. Nothing there. And it's like, wait. What is happening? So many people will dump these. They get rid of them because they think the transmission is bad or they'll take it to their trusted mechanic and the mechanic will tell them the transmission is bad. When in reality, it's just a solenoid. It's, it's an easy, this thing sits so high off the ground already. You can get under here. You can access the transmission. You can drop the pan, swap out the solenoid in a matter of maybe an hour top, start to finish. Change the filter while you're at it, put some fresh fluid in her. And I have never had one that actually had a bad transmission. Uh, that's not to say it doesn't happen. I'm sure it happens all the time. But for me, I love buying these things when people list on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, bad transmission, no third gear. I'm like, really? Okay, deal, deal, I will take it. I've heard, but I have yet to experience it. Some of these have had head gasket issues. Um, yeah, I've never experienced that. This one's leaking a tad bit of oil from the valve cover gasket, nothing too crazy. We will go ahead and check the trans fluid. We're right here, so we might as well just have a quick look. It's dark, it's not, it's not the worst I've ever seen. Put a little dab right here. It's easier to see it on uh, on white than it is just in the sun on the dipstick, but there you go. Hopefully you can see that. All right, it is a little dark, but nothing that would concern me. Nothing that would make me go, oh, transmission is bad. Now let's go ahead and check the oil. The oil is pretty, pretty dark. Uh, the oil is pretty dark, so. Somebody probably didn't take too good a care of that. The cooling fan's got some nice tension to it. I like that. Uh, if they spin too easily, it's kind of concerning because you're probably gonna have a problem with it. But this one's got some really good feedback. Really good feedback. You gotta, you gotta really kind of push it to... All right, let's check the, the coolant. And then we can... Uh... Oh my goodness. I'm starting to wonder if I should have done this. Oh man. GM and their plastic coolant caps, man. Like, a horrible idea. Well, she's full of coolant, so, you know, I can't argue that. Eh, 
I'm not 100% sold on the coolant side of this right now, but all right. Okay, I'm satisfied. Let's uh, grab the booster pack. Urgh. Let's put a jump on her. Now, the last one of these that I bought from here, I believe was the same color. It wasn't salvage, it was a clean title. Um, the problem was Copart couldn't get it to start because the positive cable was all kinds of jacked up. I was able to come out to Copart, wiggle it around just right, get it to run. I think I had my brother just kind of hold the cable at an angle and uh, <laughs> she fired right up. Fired right up, took it home, cleaned it up, sent it down to the beard and that thing was sold. All right, let's see what lights pop up, if anything. Okay, we immediately have an airbag light. I can hear a blend door in the back, so this must have rear heat and air conditioning as well. I hear a blend door back there making noise. Also four wheel drive. Let's put it in auto. It did not shift. Nope, it's not shifting into four. Let's, uh put it in neutral and see if we can get it to shift into auto you shouldn't have yeah there we go okay what about four high yep four low yeah uh hold the brakes really hard oh yeah 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 four by four works four by four works um Now it's in two, there we go. Let's put it in auto four wheel. Yeah, okay, so she engages in four wheel drive just fine. She moves. Uh, I'm not sure I like that. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, do we have an e-brake on or something? No, let's put it in two. No, sir. Now that I don't like. It seems like it's slipping. Yeah, she's... She's slipping. Doesn't go in reverse at all. Okay. Alright, well. And now she's running awful. Just awful running horribly bad right now guys yeah dang you up oh, and there she goes nah that's a wrap for me next on my list is a 2016 kia forte looks pretty clean 89,000 miles. There is some damage going on right here though. I'm not sure if something fell on this or or what happened there. It's not a rollover. Damage to the door. Damage to this section. That's very bizarre. Uh, I, I don't know, man. Maybe something fell on it. Uh, let's see. So some of the first things I look at are stickers. If I see lots of stickers have a nice trip middle finger hoonigan uh you know i start getting a pretty clear picture of the type of individual that owned this car all right there's another sticker somewhere on the front um right there you know they took off the kia badge and they they put on their own like uh uh korean version of the the badge and everything so hey nothing wrong with it man enjoy your car whatever but i will see this type of stuff and i will make a determination that most likely the car was hammered on pretty good probably you know raced around by some younger people you know it is a stick shift that does smell like donkey <clears throat> in here it is dead as a doornail and it's floated from one auction to the next and that also concerns me what that generally tells me is that whoever's selling it uh, is probably asking more for it than what they're realistically going to be able to get. It is a, I think this is a CDS car, and it's an insurance car. This is not a CDS car, this is an insurance car, but as you can see, it was at IAA at one point, 
it still has their sticker on the vehicle all right it is the turbo so it's got that going for it it's got your uh, your AutoZone special cold air intake and somebody plugged one of the intake ports with a no smoking thing that goes in your ashtray all right we went ahead and stuck a booster pack on it she's got oil but you know the oil is just ugh. that's really dark really really dark looking oil there guys the miles on this car are relatively low she's got good coolant um everything mechanically looks okay it just looks like this car had a hard life, man. It looks like, it looks like this car had a real hard life. Now the door damage altar here, that's easily remedied, man. You just throw a new door on it, you're good to go. Doors are cheap for these. This damage right here, a little more difficult, but I'm telling you, a uh, PDR guy could knock that out, make it look brand new. Let's go ahead and uh, let's push to start too. Oh, okay. Ooh, we're fancy up in here. That clutch is so light, man. That's an that's an easy clutch. Ooh. Well, she's not running well at all. At all. Not not running good. Make sure she's in neutral. Oh yeah. Dead miss. Check engine light. ABS light. Low tire light. Oh man, yeah, she's running so poorly. Dang, I was actually kind of hoping this one would be all right. The, we'll let it run for just a minute, guys. Sometimes these cars sit for a long period of time and once they run for a minute, they'll clean up. Oh, that's locks. Check the window, important window works. Least important window works air conditioning always good to try out the air conditioning while it's misfiring makes it run better all right let's uh crack the window let's go out there and take a look at the engine see how bad she's rocking under there let's give it a little rev real quick real quick i hear the blow off valve so she's got an aftermarket blow off valve on her too I mean, cleaned up and everything, guys, this car would actually be pretty decent. It really would. Unfortunately, the way it's running like that, that's, uh, that's pretty concerning. Pretty concerning. I'm assuming, you know, it said collision damage, so we're talking about this right here. Uh, it's still got coolant and everything, so I don't think it's that bad. The bumper is pretty well destroyed up front. I'm not worried about the cosmetics. Like, I could take care of the cosmetics, no issue. It's the uh, the low mileage and running this poorly that really, that really concerns me. It shouldn't be due for a tune-up or anything at 89,000 miles, guys. So, but when you're talking about a car that's been run hard, you know, sometimes this is what happens. It could have, a, it could have valve damage or something. AC is ice cold, though. You can drive around on three cylinders. You don't need four. Listen to this blow-off valve. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to just pass on this one, guys. I just, there's too much, too much going on with this car. Cannot do it, man. I was actually kind of, uh, I was kind of excited about this. I, I kind of like it, I can't lie. I think it's a cute little car. Let's go check out the fire car right next to it. Next, we got a, you know, a G6. It looks like it just was sitting in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, that's what it looks like to me. I don't see anything under here that's melted. So this all occurred from the outside in. That's crazy. That's crazy. Something was sitting next to this car and just poof, lit up, man. The paint is destroyed. I don't know if you could, can you save the body work, like the fender and everything, if you just repainted this, could this be sanded down? I don't know. I don't know. Obviously the mirror is melted, the window is cracked, like she, uh, 103,000 miles, not too bad on the miles. Let's look around the rest of it. It doesn't look bad. There's a little bit of rust. I've seen this before. I think this is pretty common for them to start rusting right here. 
not too bad. The rest of the body's in, in pretty decent shape. I wouldn't call it great, but it's got hail damage. Not extreme, but still worth noting that there is hail damage. So obviously you need, a, at a bare minimum, a headlight, a bumper, and the fender liner, and a wheel, and a tire, and, and, and then a mirror, and then a windshield, and then paint. Yeah, it's, I, can, I can understand why this one is here. Uh, that stuff starts getting kind of expensive. Uh, seat, somebody had uh, pockets that had those little bling blings on them or something and scraped up the, uh, the seat. Do we have juice? We do have juice. Hey. Oh, oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Wow, okay. All right, so somebody cut the catalytic converter, man. That's classy. Real classy. Cut the cats. All right, let's put it in gear. Yep. Yep. That's wild. Works crazy, but it works. <laughs> no warning lights other than a low tire and obviously she's got a low tire let's crack this window let's go check and see what things look like under the hood i got the ac on right now and verdict is yes ac is getting cold we also have a full tank of gas very nice all right i can't believe someone jacked the catalytic converter man it's that's crazy. That's crazy. All right, it's not a four banger. It's got the three five in it. It's a torquey motor, very torquey motor. See, we got more rust, lots of scaling rust over on that strut right there. But the coolant is very clean. It is full. Honestly, the car looks to be in pretty good shape, guys. It really does. And it definitely needs a little bit of work. Is it worth it? I don't know, man. Uh, looks pretty good back here too I just can't believe someone I can't believe someone took the catalytic converter like I'm, I'm guessing this is an insurance car it doesn't say but I'm guessing this is an insurance car it's like hey before it goes to auction let's jack the converters off of it oh that's just that's that's just awful that's awful all right guys I'll be honest with you I got no interest in this car at all so let's go uh Let's go find the next one because I'm already looking at it. Next, we have a 2009 Chevy Impala with 140,000 miles and it's donated. Interesting. Now, a Chevy Impala is a great car. I love this generation of the Impala. They're reliable. They just run forever. And with 140,000 miles, like I, I really wouldn't hesitate to put a bit on this car. Not at all. Not at all. The body looks good. I don't see any like crazy damage. I don't see any hail damage, which is unusual for Oklahoma. We've got, uh, what do we got on the front of Firestone Affinity? What do we got back here? Firestone Affinity. Okay, so we've got matching tires. So far, they have good tread. Same thing, Firestone Affinity. Firestone Affinity, good tread, good body, low miles. And wow, look at that interior. Absolutely beautiful car. It is. Does it have juice? No, doesn't have juice. All right, so we already know we got to put a jump on it. Hey, it comes with two keys too. Look at that, two keys, one fob. Donated, huh? I don't know, guys. Donated. I've had, donations are a, a mixed bag. They're a lot of fun um, because a donation can be a lot of things. It could be, you know, someone just out of the goodness of their heart donated it uh, to help someone out, and you end up with a great car. And sometimes they donated it because they couldn't sell it and get anything out of it. So they donated it hoping to get a better tax break than what they could have got if they would sold it for cash money. This uh, is interesting. Somebody's been in the fuse box here. That's usually not... A good sign but all right 
Uh, it's a little dirty under here. And I'm not gonna lie, it's actually a, a lot dirty under here. It's still got the AC Delco spark plugs, two, four, and six. Uh, this would be one to definitely run a Carfax on, but the oil is very clean, very clean. So at least someone kept the oil changed in it. Trans fluid, I'm not even sure if there's a dipstick on this. I can't remember what year they started like go into the sealed units but i'm not seeing one so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and throw a jump on this and let's see how it sounds she should have some juice in her now we should look at that beamer back there i actually really like that something tells me it's probably wrecked though it's got a lot of riding on the windshield i don't hear any dings that's what the okay things are coming to life let's turn all this stuff down a little bit all right here we go ready Okay, let's see what lights stay on. Everything went out. Power steering is whining a bit. That could go away once it warms up. Important window. And that is a negative. The motor works, regulator's bad. Secondary window works that window works and that window does not so both of the windows on the driver's side are not functioning let's check air conditioning uh, um, we'll give it just a minute I'm not feeling air conditioning just yet but it could take a few minutes sometimes so let's uh, give her a little rev Power steering sounds like it's whining less and less. Reverse. Oh yeah, she moves. Yep, brakes feel good. Nice. Uh, as far as air conditioning, that's gonna be a negative as well. We've got nothing, and yes, I made sure the AC was on. Yeah, no air conditioning. We'll go ahead and shut it off. Yeah, power steering is still whining some. Let's go check the fluid level on the power steering. We'll check in the trunk real quick. Take a look at what's back here. Nothing. All right. You know, I'm serious about a car when I start checking in the, the transmission pan area. I mean, the transmission, the transmit. yeah, uh, the trunk pan. When I, when I go and I look at the trunk pan of a car for damage, I'm actually serious about it because I don't do that for many cars, guys. That's one of my tells. Yeah, that power steering pump is whining. The fluid is really uh, aerated. It's got lots of bubbles in it. So the pump could be bad or it could be seriously overdue for a power steering fluid change. Uh, I like to think that a power steering fluid flush might, or exchange, I should say, could clear that up, but most likely uh, it won't. The damage is probably already done. But there it is, guys, an 09 Impala. It seems to run well. It goes right into gear. You know, a couple little issues. Pa uh, driver's side windows don't work. Air conditioning doesn't work. Power steering is whining. But aside from that, she actually looks like a, she looks like a clean car, guys. Really does. I like this one. Comment below. Tell me what you think about the 09 Impala. Unfortunately for me, I have a thing for these BMWs. And since I saw it sitting back here, I figured let's just take a look at it. 162,000 miles. Oh, okay. Well, how bad is it? How bad is that rear end damage? I don't see a buckle. Crash bar is missing. How bad is it over here? It's not, this isn't bad. This doesn't look bad at all, guys. This doesn't look bad at all. Let's lift this up and see. Oh, wow. Wait, why is there a headlight in here? Huh? Looks like we got a lot of the stuff in here. I see a tail light, but a headlight like that's, that's weird. Oh my goodness. Down you go, old girl. Ugh. Well, that sucker's heavy. My goodness. Is it, it's not wrecked in the front. No, the front is fine. 
The front is fine. Honestly, the back doesn't look that bad to me. Uh, oh, yes. This is the motor that I'd want in this. Yep, yep, yep. She does have some miles on her, though, guys. Like, she really does. She's got a lot of miles on her. Uh, wire harnesses. You can see a lot of exposed wires down there. Maybe that's just how they come from the factory. She's leaking a little oil here and there. What typical high miles BMW, right? Let's take a look at the interior. I am excited about this one. I like this. I like this a lot. How's the interior look? Smell? Interior smells good. It looks good. Oh, well, yeah, that's hello. All right, there's... Yeah, the rest of the parts are sitting back there. Okay. What if it's got power? We'll see. We'll put the key in it and see if it does anything at all. Ah, oh, here we go. Put the key fob in there. Yes. Uh, she rattles a little bit when she first starts up. Got your iDrive. Not bad, she sounds pretty good. Steering, steering feels good, brakes feel good. Important window works. That works as well, 162,000 miles. We've got a lamp out, which obviously doesn't have brake lamps installed, so that's normal. Let's put it into gear, man. Ooh. Okay, we put it into drive and it started idling kind of funky. And she goes forwards. She goes backwards. It is idling a little weird. It seems to, cl it's cleared up most of the time, but on occasion it starts just kind of misfiring a tad. She revs good though. She revs good. Let's uh, try out the air conditioning real quick. You guys know I got to have I got to have air conditioning. It's already on, so Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice and cold. It knows that the hatch is not closed. It's a little bit upset about that. Please close trunk. Nothing I can do about it, man. Yeah, air conditioning is nice. It's idling a lot better now. Let's put it back in gear and see if it gets any any better. Yeah, she seems to have cleared up. Yeah. I like this, guys. Okay. I shouldn't get... Oh, look at the sunroof! Oh, is it not gonna... The sunroof works, but it's like this uh, shade right here doesn't work. There it goes. There it goes. Oh, wow. I like that. Look how that whole thing just raised up. Oh, guys. I love it. I love it. I gotta stop. I need... An X5, like I need a hole in my head. I don't need one. I gotta convince myself I don't want one. Unfortunately, I really, 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 really do. Okay, well, let's go. Let's go find something else. What do you say we end this video with a Hummer H3? Yeah, I'm sorry, it's an H3. <laughs> a lot of people will be like, yeah, nah. It's faded. It's got a lot of miles. Almost 300,000 miles on this. <laughs> Bad boy. Someone actually drove this. I mean, I'm kind of surprised that it's been driven 300,000 miles. Generally, at least out here, you don't see Hummers very often. Um, they're usually out in the summertime, the springtime, you know, when the weather is nice. You'd think these things would be seen more when the weather is bad, but they're not. You see them mostly out here when the weather is nice. So seeing one with 300,000 miles on just kind of blows my mind. Uh, she took a hit for sure right there. Uh, how bad is it? It's not bad. Honestly, guys, I expected this thing to have leaks, things pouring out from under it. It doesn't. 
Uh, other than needing a freshened up paint job, the paint job is awful on this. The interiors are usually garbage on these, but this one's not. The interior is actually pretty decent. This looks pretty decent. How's the back look? This could be a contender. Is this a... Is this an insurance car? It doesn't say. I can't... It doesn't have any of the labels on it. Ugh, it's listed as a non-runner though, but the key was left on. All right. Let's pop the hood. And of course, we'll throw a uh, booster pack on. The tires also aren't in the greatest of shape. So there's that to take into consideration as well. Where is the daggum hood release? Right there it is. Oh, boy, that hood weighs about a thousand pounds. Oh boy, it's just got cobwebs and spider webs. Uh, so she's been sitting a while. See, look at this battery. That's a tiny little battery. That's crazy, okay. Um, do you think she runs or do you think she's really dead as a doornail? That oil is very clean. Very clean. Okay, trans fluid. Let's take a look. Oh wow, the trans fluid is all the way up to there. That's, that's, that's a lot of trans fluid, guys. And there's what the trans fluid looks like. Very, very dark. All right. Well, I'd say there's definitely a possibility there's something wrong with the transmission on this one. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't put it past it. Coolant. Yeah, it looks a little rough, but I mean, at least it has coolant. It's not straight water or anything like that. Let me uh, get that back on. Hopefully there's no stop leak in it. I didn't see any. Urgh. Let's check under the oil cap. For 300,000 miles, man, <laughs> this thing actually looks to be in really good shape. Let me throw a jump on it and let's see what it does or doesn't do. All right, booster pack is on. She made some pretty funky noises. Like I said, tires are also in just really bad shape. So let's see. Oh, the ignition does nothing. Put it in neutral. No, ignition does absolutely nothing. Oh, the key doesn't come out oh well it's in park there we go it's in neutral okay interesting oh that's a nissan key fob that's an <laughs> it's got a nissan key fob and a chevrolet that is a hummer key huh okay yeah it's getting absolutely nothing so everything on the dash comes on everything appears to light up like it's supposed to it just seems like either the ignition is not functioning which i find that unlikely or there's something going on with the starter starter relay starter solenoid wire going to the starter Well, that's that's different. That's different. I like that. All right, let's let's take a look around it real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and shut this battery pack off, just for safety. Headliner. Actually, it it doesn't look bad at all. It really doesn't. But all the tires, like even the spare tire, they're all junk. Tires are shot. Ooh. Oh my goodness. What is this? So it had a system. Somebody took it out. What is this panty dropper? What? Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. Well, it comes with uh, it comes with some panty dropper, I guess. Warning: This product's been known to have random women remove. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh. Anyway. Moving on, I mean, the body looks good. The interior looks good, other than a set of tires and trying to figure out why. 
it doesn't attempt to start at all. It could be something as simple as a fuse. It could be something as simple as a relay. It could be a wiring issue. Um, fun. I'm intrigued by this one. I'm intrigued. So I'm gonna, I am gonna keep this on my watch list and we'll see what happens. I, th this could be fun. It's one that's just a complete unknown and I find that to be entertaining. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I am gonna get out of here. I appreciate you taking time to watch these videos. If you enjoyed the content, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know you appreciate it and you like the content. If not, go ahead and hit the thumbs down button. Gotta give a big shout out and thank you to Copart for letting us come out here and record these videos. If the wind was too bad for you, I am very sorry. It is an extremely windy day in Oklahoma today. Don't forget you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Auto Auction Rebuild. You can subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content. I would truly appreciate it. Until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to catching you all very soon in the next one.